Right, so in the last video I showed you how you could define the exponential for a complex number. So in this video I'm going to look at some other functions you can do with complex numbers. Okay, so the first thing is I'm going to talk about log. And that makes sense because we defined complex exponential and log is the inverse function. So first of all, complex log. Okay, so this one I'm going to give a slightly different notation, I'm going to write it as ln and then a kind of c. This is the mathematical symbol for the complex numbers, c with a line going through it. Okay. If I like this bigger, it's like this. Okay. So this is the mathematical symbol for the complex numbers and I'm going to denote the complex logarithm as ln with a c on it. Okay. So it should be defined as the inverse function, right? So this means if we want to compute log z, where z is some complex number, let's suppose this is equal to w. So if this is true, then this is the same as saying that z should be equal to e to the w. Okay. Now if z is in exponential form r e to the i theta then you can see that z is equal to e to the log r plus i theta okay and then just by comparing this and this you see that therefore w is equal to log r so here this is the real log right r is a positive real number so we can define the real logarithm here plus i theta, okay, and then putting this back into this equation, we get that therefore the complex logarithm of a complex number z in the exponential form like this is equal to the log of r plus i theta, okay. okay, so that defines the logarithm, so that might look quite easy. But there is something which is a bit tricky about this, and that's that this function is not completely well defined. If you look at um, Euler's formula, which we worked out before, e to the i theta is cos theta plus i sine theta, okay, then if I set theta goes into theta plus 2n pi, then I get e to the i theta plus 2n pi is equal to cos theta plus 2n pi plus i sine theta plus 2n pi. Okay, so here I'm assuming that n is an integer, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. Okay, but we know that the cos and sine functions are periodic over plus or minus 2 pi, right? So these functions here are periodic in theta goes to theta plus or minus 2 pi. Right? If you shift by 2 pi, then you get back to the same result. So therefore, this is the same as cos theta plus i sine theta, and this is the same as e to the i theta. So in other words, e to the i theta plus 2n pi is equal to e to the i theta. And in particular, you get the result that e to the i, if theta is equal to 0 in this equation, then e to the i 2n pi is equal to 1. Okay, that's quite a nice result to remember. Okay, another way you can think about this is on the argon diagram. If I've got a complex number z here, we said that theta is defined as the angle there, theta. But there's nothing to stop you as defining theta as the angle going all the way around that way and all the way back again, right? In other words, plus 2 pi to get back to here. Or you could define theta as being the angle going this way around, which would be minus 2 pi. Okay, and you can see that all these angles are actually the same. Therefore, they define the same complex number. Okay. So in other words, the complex exponential form 
you can always shift theta by 2n pi and you get the same complex number. But that means here in the complex logarithm, I can do the same thing for theta. So therefore, if um, log r plus i theta, so in other words, okay, if e to the log r plus i theta is equal to z, then so is e to the log r plus i theta plus i 2n pi also equal to z. So that means that this is also a solution of this equation for the complex logarithm here. Okay. So in general, the complex logarithm of z is log r plus i theta plus i 2n pi. Okay. So you see here that the value defined via the inverse function is not unique. The value of the logarithm defined in this way is not unique. You can shift theta by 2 pi or 2 n pi and the result must, remains the same. So this is what's known as a multi-valued function. So log cz is a multi-valued function. In other words, it can take more than one possible value. Okay. So I'll just do one very quick example to illustrate this. I think that might be worthwhile. Let's suppose we want to complete the complex logarithm of 2i. Okay. So the first thing we need to do is to find 2i in the form r e to the i theta. Okay. So we want 2i equals r e to the i theta. If you think about this on an argon diagram, 2i is up here, right? So the length is 2, and the angle is pi by 2. So therefore, this should be equal to 2 times e to the i pi by 2. So therefore, using this formula with r equals 2, theta equals pi by 2, we get that the complex logarithm of 2i is the log of 2 plus i times pi by 2 plus 2n pi. Okay, that's the result. And again, n is an integer. So any integer n will be a solution to this equation. Okay, so there's a general approach to dealing with multi-value functions in complex numbers, which comes up a lot. Um, I don't want to go into the details because that's quite a big topic, but I will just say that there is something called the principal value. So we want to get rid of the multi-valued nature of this function here. So usually you define that theta should be between minus pi and pi. So that means if you've got a number over here, you define theta measured this way. And if you've got a number down there, you define theta measured that way. And then that gives you a unique value for the complex logarithm. So the principal value of log c is chosen so that theta is always in between minus pi and pi. Okay. So in other words, the, the term here is always between minus pi and pi. So in this case, in the case of 2i, it would just be plus i pi by 2 here. Okay, but this is a choice, right? This is not something that follows mathematically from the definition of complex log, but it's just our choice. We've got a multi-valued function and we want to choose one particular value, right? It's exactly the same choice that you make when you do the arc sine function. If you've got arc sine looks like this, sorry, this is sine. So arc sine should tell you the points which give you a particular value here. And you see that there are infinitely many such points. So therefore the inverse function has infinitely many solutions. It's multi-valued. 
in the same sense that complex log is. But what you do is you just say, okay, I'm going to choose my solution to be between here and here. Okay. And that's exactly the same thing you do with a complex log. Right, so the other things I want to define in this video are the complex trigonometrical functions. So things like sine, cos, and tan, and so on. The complex trigonometric, so that's often abbreviated to trig functions. Okay. So Euler's formula tells you that e to the i theta is equal to cos theta plus i sine theta. Now if I just said theta goes to minus theta, then I get e to the minus i theta is equal to cos theta minus i sine theta. Okay, so this is equation one and this is equation two. And you can use these equations to get cos theta and sine theta in terms of the complex exponential. So in particular, if I do equation 1 plus equation 2 divided by 2, and that tells me e to the i theta plus e to the minus i theta over 2 is equal to cos theta. And if I do 1 minus 2 divided by 2i, then I get e to the i theta minus e to the minus i theta divided by 2i is equal to sine theta. So these two results give you expressions for sine and cos in terms of the complex exponential. Okay. And we use these definitions to define sine and cos functions for a general complex number. Okay. So in other words, we define if I want to do cos not of theta but of a complex number z, then we define it in this way. So we define it as e to the i z plus e to the minus i z divided by 2 and sine z is e to the i z minus e to the minus i z divided by 2i. Okay. So that's how you can define cos and sine of a general complex number. Okay. Now there's a particular case of this which is more commonly seen and this is where z is purely an imaginary number so in particular if z is equal to i times b so it has no real part only imaginary part then you get that cos i b is equal to e to the minus b plus e to the b over 2 and sine of IB is equal to e to the minus b minus e to the b all over 2i. Okay. And this is used to define two more functions which are related. You see that this function is a real function, right? If b is real, you get a real number. So this one is known as the hyperbolic cos function. So cos with a h for hyperbolic. So this is called cos b. And this one is an imaginary number, but if I multiply by minus i, then you get a real function. So this is defined as minus i sinh b. Okay. So for considering the cos and sine functions for an imaginary number, you get these hyperbolic cos and sine functions. So these ones are known as the hyperbolic functions. Hyperbolic. Okay. Okay, so, so this one, because it's minus i, it might be better to write it this way. Hyperbolic sine of b is equal to, so if I multiply by, sorry, this should be plus i anyway. If I multiply both sides by minus i here, then you get this is equal to e to the b minus e to the minus b over 2. So sinh b hyperbolic sine b is defined in this way and cosh b hyperbolic cosine of b is defined in this way. Okay. 
Okay, so that's the hyperbolic trig functions, and in the same way you can define um, the tan of a complex number, right? That's just the sine of a complex number divided by the cos of the complex number, and you can also define the hyperbolic tan of a complex number. So this actually appeared in the um, in the test last week, right? This tanch function. So this is defined as hyperbolic sine of z divided by hyperbolic cosh of z, okay. and so on. You can define all the trig functions in this way. Okay. Finally, you also want to be able to define the inverse trig functions. Okay, so the inverse trig functions. How do you define something like um, arc cos or arc sine for complex numbers? Okay. So let's do it. So if arc sine of z is some complex number w, then by definition this means that um, z is equal to the sine of w. Okay. So that's the definition of arc sine, isn't it? So if z is equal to sine w, I can use this formula for sine here. This means that z is equal to e to the i w minus e to the minus i w divided by 2i. So this gives me 2i c is equal to e to the i w minus e to the minus i w. This, if I multiply by e to the i w and take this term over here, I get the e to the 2 i w minus 2 i c e to the i w minus 1 is equal to 0. Okay. So I've just multiplied by e to the i w here. Right? This term gives me that, this term gives me that, this term gives me that, and taking this term onto this side of the equation. So I get this. and now I want to find out what is w, right? Because w is arc sine z. That's the thing I want to calculate. And if we said that this thing e to the i w equals x, then you see that this is just a quadratic equation in x, because this is x squared minus 2iz times x minus 1 is equal to 0. Right? And you know what the solution then of this is. This means that x is ic plus or minus the square root of ic squared plus 1. But okay. x is e to the iw, so this means e to the iw is equal to the same thing. Okay, and here I can use the fact that i squared is minus 1, so this is 1 minus c squared. Now I can use the complex log, which is the inverse of the exponential. This means iw is the complex log of ic plus or minus square root 1 minus c squared. And then finally, multiply by minus i, we get that w is equal to minus i times the complex log ic plus or minus square root 1 minus c squared. Okay, in other words, it's possible to write down the inverse trig functions in terms of the complex log, which is unsurprising because you can write down the trig functions in terms of the complex exponential, and therefore the same should be true for the inverse functions. Okay, so you can do the same things for um, arc cos and arc tan. So let me just quickly tell you what the results are. The calculation is the same, so I'm not going to repeat the calculation, or at least the method is the same. So we found the result for arc sine then. Arc sine of z is minus i times the complex log of i z plus or minus square root 1 minus c squared. Similarly, you can show that arc cos z is equal to minus i times the complex log of z plus or minus i times the square root 1 minus c squared. So the only difference between this and this is that 
the sine is multiplied by i here, right? If I take this and multiply by i, then I get that. So you should think about why that is. There's a quite simple reason that these that must be true. Just to repeat, if I take what's in here and I multiply by i, then I get that. So there's a very simple relationship between arc cos and arc sine, which has a simple reason. And also, you can show that arc tan of z is equal to minus i over 2 times the complex log of 1 plus ic divided by 1 minus ic. Okay, so this one I've done the calculation for you. These other two, the calculation is the same. Okay, so that's it for the complex trig functions and their inverses. One final one I realized I should just quickly mention because it's on the practice sheet is how to do complex powers. In other words, how do you compute z to the power w, where z and w are both complex numbers? Okay. So again, this is defined using the complex exponential. So we define z to the w is equal to e to the w times the complex log of z. Okay. That's the definition. Okay, and you can see that this is the same relationship you have for real numbers. If z and w were real numbers, then this would be true, right? So that's why you define it in that way. But it's important to note that the fact that log c is multivalued implies that in general the complex powers are also multivalued functions. So the fact that log c is multivalued implies that z to the w is also multivalued in general. I think I've just got time to do a quick example of that. So the example I will do for you is 2 to the power i. Let's have a look at that. So suppose I want to calculate 2 to the power i. So according to this formula here, I should write this as e to the Oh, wait. Yeah, okay, that's right. e to the i times the complex log 2. Okay, and the complex log of 2 is just the real log of 2, but plus i times 2n pi. Okay, that follows from the way I define complex log. The multivalued part is here. So this is e to the i log 2. And then i squared is minus 1, so I get minus 2n pi here. Okay. Okay. So that defines, again, n is an integer, so this defines infinitely many solutions. And if I draw this, log of 2 is about what, 0 0.7, which is about pi by 6, pi by Mm -hmm. pi by 4-ish. Okay, so it's going to be about somewhere here. So there's going to be a line down here, which is where the angle here is log 2. Okay, and the points, if n is 0, then the length is 1. That's the principal value. Okay. But you also have points, if n is negative, then I get closer and closer to 0 quite rapidly. So I'll get more points going down here. And if n is positive, then I get bigger solutions out here, and, you know, out here, out here, going up to infinity. Okay. So in general, you see that the complex power function is multivalued, but it does have, again, a principal value. There. Okay, right, so I think that's all I want to say about complex functions. If this was complete, confusing, then please look at the final video this week where I'm going to do some examples of calculations using these complex functions. And that should hopefully make things a lot more clear.